check. Okay. Um, so a couple things to do first before we carry on, before we go any further on this. And the first is a couple of keyboard shortcuts to use regarding mask. And the first is if you want to hide the mask temporarily, you hold on the shift key and you click on it and it puts a big, big red X on your mask and it basically means that it's just temporarily turned the mask off. It's still there, but you don't see uh, it, it. You don't see its effect because you've temporarily turned it off. If you hold down the shift key and click on it again, you get rid of it. If you hold down the option key and click on the mask, you simply see the mask by itself, which we are going to now inspect. So I want to see just the mask. So I'm clicking on the option key. Then I'm going to zoom in here onto this mask close, and I'm just taking a look around to see if I can spot anything in here that didn't get so i'm looking for contamination i'm looking for some big hole in here something that i didn't you know didn't quite capture didn't quite work whatever i'm zooming around on all of that and i don't see any problems however i'm going to invert the mask again command i to invert it to inspect the white version of it and to see again if i spot anything that I may have missed in here, any holes. I can also look at the background area. I don't think I'm seeing anything in there. That all is seeming pretty good. Again, I've got that nice soft edge along the uh, top edge of the, of the um, sweater. So, and if I had actually bothered to clean my screen, things would be a whole lot better. I would just tell you that right now, but I'm sure you're seeing the same thing I am. Uh, if you have dirty screens, um, it becomes really difficult to uh, actually fix. So speaking of dirty screens, how do you clean a laptop screen? I have a microfiber, anybody else? So how do you use a microfiber? You just wipe it across your screen or do you go and then wipe it across? The, I mean, how do you do it? Yeah, the second thing is what everybody does. It's not the best thing in the world to do. So the way to actually clean your screen, if you really want to clean your screen, is shut your computer off. So go ahead and shut it down. Then you want to tip your computer up like this so that the screen is actually flat. And I typically prop the back against a wall or something. But you want to be flat down on the ground. Then you make a mixture out of warm water and denatured alcohol. If you don't have denatured alcohol, you can actually use vodka. Um, a half and half mixture on the two. And the reason you want to do a half and half is that by diluting the alcohol, you dilute its solvent process. The part of it also does less damage to your screen, but by adding alcohol to water, it evaporates faster and it doesn't leave stuff on your screen. So then with that dilution made, you take a microfiber cloth, you dip it into there, you wring it. You don't want, you want it as dry a cloth as you can get it. And you start in the very middle of your screen and you rub in a circle coming out and out because you want to do the very least amount out at those edges that you can possibly do and then immediately try to wipe it off with a dry part and you'll have a good screen. Um, okay, so anyway, I'm feeling good about this mask. This part's actually working really well for me. Now we need to move on. And this is the part that throws a lot of people. And the thing that we need to keep in mind in all of this is that I've gone to all this trouble to build all of these edges. Do I want to bother? No. And for instance, the top edge of the has already been built. I again. It's already it's already working really well for me. I don't need to make it again. And the idea of trying to rebuild it using a different selection method and then have it fit with this part right here is possible. I'm going to use this to begin with. So the thing I'm going to go after is going to be the screen. And to do that, I'm simply going to copy this mask. So it's sitting right down here. Um, if you had done any changes, so you see this thing right here, that's, it's, 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 it's the mask. I need to invert this guy back again because it's supposed to be showing the blue background, not the figure. So I'm going to hit Command. If I had done any work on this at all, if I had gone in and I'd spotted something, I have, oh, there's a problem. There was an area in here that I missed, or there's something down here I missed, whatever, and I fixed it, then this mask that's on this layer is no longer the same as my blue background channel because I will have refined this mask right here. So you have two options in doing this. One, you can realize that the blue background, again, we didn't do any refining, but let's say we did. Are we all clear on that part? So just a hypothetical, we did a little bit more work on the layer mask. You have two options. You can 
actually take the blue background and you can throw it away. In my case, I typically don't do that. What I would do instead is I would come over to the mask that I've just that I have done that extra work on. I would hold on the option, I mean, sorry, the command key, click. Save selection, and I would call this blue background refined. Some people in refined, they'll refer to it as version two, version three, version four, version five. The trick to this is, is that sometimes in doing your refining work, you can actually go too far, you can make a mistake. This would allow you to go actually back in time. So in our case, I'm just gonna call it refined and say okay. And then you'll notice that right down here at the bottom, you've actually got this blue background refined. So you can have these panels. You don't need to worry about that. They, don't, they take up virtually no room at all as far as your file size goes. Uh, Command D to deselect. So in our next move here, because I said, oh, sorry. Where was the what? Up in the select menu. So up to the select menu, down to save selection. Got it? Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna go after is actually the sweater, but to start the sweater, because I've already got the upper edge of the sweater, I'm simply gonna copy this mask. So in my blue background refined version, I'm gonna simply click on the channel, I'm gonna drag it down onto the little dog-eared guy, it makes a copy of it, I'm gonna double click on that copy and I'm gonna rename it sweater because that's what I'm actually gonna do with it. I'm gonna use this as a sweater mask. Now, in this case, again, if I want the sweater to show, the sweater needs to be white. Everything else needs to be black. So I'm going to invert this mask. So now at least I've got the top edge of the sweater. So what ultimately has now come down for me that I need to ultimately pick out in this is that basically I need to subtract her skin, the skin part. I need that, that's the only edge left that I need to make. I can get rid of her whole head. I can just circle this with a big old lasso tool and get rid of all of that. All I'm really looking to do is to establish this line of her skin. So if you click back on your RGB image guy, Again, I'm gonna temporarily turn off this. Well, let's not temporarily turn off. Let's just go ahead and make another copy of the new version. We need a copy of this new version. Again, it's not the same as the original Sunny down here at the bottom. So I'm simply gonna to come to this entire layer. I'm gonna drag the entire layer to make a new copy of it. I'm gonna turn off the bottom one. I'm gonna actually rename this bottom layer. Um, this is actually gonna be, um, let's do, let's do this, let's do this. Let's do this, guys. We've got a copy of this right going on right now. I, I'm gonna be extra anal about all of this. I'm gonna throw this layer mask away. This would be a good time. So has everybody made a copy of their new version that's still got the layer mask on it? We've all got that copy, right? Come back to your original new version and grab the layer mask itself and throw it away. And you'll get this dialog box that opens up. You will see in all the uh, assignment instructions that I give you guys, whatever, do not apply your mask, do not apply your mask, do not apply your mask. This is what I'm meaning. I'm not meaning that you load a selection and build a layer mask. I'm meaning this warning right here, and this is why I don't want you to do it. Go ahead and click on apply, because we can go back in history to undo it. And what you'll see is that this is a destructive move. Again, if you click on this and hold down the option key to only show this, what we've actually done is by re uh, removing that mask and then hitting apply, it is a completely destructive move. This has now removed that pixel content. It does not exist here anymore. It is gone. There's no way you can refine this ever again. It's actually, you've done, it's a destructive move. You've done all this damage to it. Does that make sense what's going on here? So, and there's no reason to do it. If again, you go back in history to when you actually um, uh, uh, applied that layer mask, you, again, you've got the very same thing. It appears to be exactly the same by leaving that layer mask on there. So again, there would never be a reason to apply that. Does that sort of make sense? Okay, in our case, we're simply gonna throw the layer mask away on the bottom. And in this case, we're simply going to delete it because what I'm just doing is leaving, me, uh, leaving myself a copy of the new version so that I can keep copying this over and over and over. Then I am going to rename the one that's above it and I'm gonna call this blue background because that's what it is. And say okay. 
Then I'm going to make another copy of New Virgin so that I've got something to actually build the sweater. And I'm going to drag this up to the top and I'm going to rename it Sweater. And I'm going to say OK to that. So again, I've got just, I'm going to turn this eyeball off. I've got just my blue background version. If I turn, so I'm going to show you my layers palette really quickly just so everybody understands what I'm doing here. So I've got my original background. It was just white. There's really no reason to even keep it, but that's the way the file came. Then I've got the sunny version of it here, and this is the sunny that actually has the hole in her hair and all this stuff up here that I didn't want. This is my new version. That's the one that's actually got this uh, part that's actually been filled in. Then if I turn these guys off, this is my blue background only made with a new version. And then I'm back to the next level right here, which is my sweater guy, and this is the one I'm actually looking to make. Everybody good on this part? Okay, so with the sweater one, this is what I was talking about. I have already got a mask down here that has all of the top edges here. It's got this edge along the top of her shoulder, and it's got the edge on her other shoulder. Let me redock this really quick. It's got this other edge over here as well. So the only lines that I'm really looking to make is I'm looking for her hand line down here. I'm looking to remove the skin and her head. Well, her head's easy to remove because her head is not touching the sweater. So it's really just the edges of where the skin is meeting the sweater. That's the only thing that I really need to worry about. Out. Is this making sense to all of you guys? Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. With the sweater layer actually active, I'm going to come up to the select menu down to the select and mask workspace. And you will see with the select and mask workspace on, if you click on your view, your drop down menu right here, go ahead and put this onto the onion skin. That's actually where we want it to be. We all good about that part? And then again, set your transparency to 50%. Now, if you crank this all the way up to 100%, it goes, you, you don't see anything. If you go all the way down, you've got the full sunny. So again, this is designed to show you what area has been selected. So you'll see when I actually use the quick selection tool and I start to run it across here, you'll see that it actually begins to build. Um, you, you'll see the area that's actually active. So we're going to try that. So it's the first tool up here. It's the quick selection tool. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger, and I'm actually going to use it to draw across this part of the sweater. What I'm hoping it'll do is give me this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. That's what I'm hoping. If it gets that, if I can get the skin edge, I'm good to go because I've already got the shoulders. I don't need to rebuild those. So I'm going to try it. I'm simply going to start up here. And again, with the quick selection tool, you do not want the brush to touch the edge you want to get. So for instance, I want it to find this edge right here. You do not want this tool to touch that edge. Keep the tool down here and let's just see how it does as we start to go around this. So I'm going to start up here at the top and I'm going to click and you can see what I mean about this is what the uh, onion skin does is the area that's now being selected is revealed to you. It's not ghosted out like this is uh, before. So you can see what areas have actually been selected, what haven't been selected. So it's actually done a relatively good job of this. We need to go and inspect this a little bit better, but I'm just going to carry this on and see how well this tool ultimately does in here. So I'm going to come up here. The reason, oh, by the way, I should tell you, the reason I didn't actually go looking at channels already is that we'll go look at channels after we do this. I know when I'm looking at channels that one of the problems that I run into is the skin tone here ends up being extremely close to the, um, uh, uh, to the, the sweater in pretty much all of my channels. It's really hard to find any separation between it. And the advantage of using this tool is it's not only looking at tonality, which is what you would find in the channels, but it's also looking at hue. It's also looking at the color. So the fact it's co it's combining. It's sort of like taking elements from the color range tool, and it's taking elements from the channels. It's taking all of that to build these edges, and it just does it in a faster way, or at least that's my hope. So then I'm going to continue to click up in here. And finally, I'm going to go up to the top of the shoulder, although again, I don't really need the top of the shoulder. 
all the only line that I'm really looking to get is this line right here. I'm going to come down here to the bottom part as well. So then I'm going to zoom in and take a look and see what the quality of this edge actually really is. Now, if you again take your slider here and you actually drag it all the way down, you can see that there's a little bit of this sweater meets the skin here in the back. And I do not have that as a part of my selection yet. So I'm hoping I can get it. I'm bumping this thing back up again. I'm going to make my brush extremely small just to get into that little narrow area right there. And then I'm going to simply drag across that. And again, I'm probably going to have to go in and fix this guy a little bit. But that actually did a pretty good job of it. Um, I'm going to take a look, a look at what this looks like on white. So I'm going to again click on my drop down view and I'm going to come down and see what this guy looks like not on white, but on layers. This will actually show me what's going on on my transparency. So I think that there's a, actually a little bit of scalloped edge here, and I'm not sure that I'm really seeing what should be in there. The quick selection tool is really not the perfect tool designed to show me that. So I'm going to see if the refine edge won't help me on this edge just a little bit. So it's the next tool down. You want to select the refine edge tool, make your brush a little bit smaller. And then we're simply going to click and paint along this edge. And stop when you sort of get to where the hand is. Now that has made the change. I'm going to hit Command Z to go back, Command Z to go back and forth. Personally, I think the refine edge did a bad job of this. I actually think it made the image worse. Don't you guys agree? So I am not going to use the refine edge on that part. I'm then going to look at the, um, the part right here along uh, the top edge of, of the cuff right here. I'm going to run that tool along the top edge of the cuff as well. And I'm getting to this little point right here. I'm not going to, there's skin in there. I'm going to avoid this. I'm going to let go. And again, I use Command Z to go back and forth. And the Command Z in this case, I actually think helped me. It actually took off a little bit of an edge down here. And it actually gave me, I think, a little bit nicer edge on the front. I'm going to run it across the uh, part of skin showing here. Now, yours may not be showing skin right here. Mine is. I'm going to run it across that and see what it does there and simply let go. I think that that actually did make an improvement right there. I'm going to run it now along the top edge of this cuff right here and let go. Command Z to go back and forth. Actually, I think it's better there as well. Uh, and then I feel like I've got too solid a line right here and I'll just see if it does a good refined job for me or not. So I'm going to click and run it down this guy. And it actually improved that edge. Again, I don't care about this upper edge up here because I've already built that in another part of my image. So I'm going to zoom back out. Again, you can still use the very same keyboard shortcuts that you use in, in, in regular Photoshop. Spacebar Command and Option to actually zip back out. And this has actually done an extremely good job of outlining the sweater. Again, I don't trust these, um, I don't trust the, the shoulders that are sitting up at the top because those are not based on anything else. But I do like the work that it's actually done in here. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say to this, I want you to create this as a layer mask. So I'm scrolling down to the very bottom and I'm going to say output to layer mask. Remember in our drop down menu here you have different options in here. In this case we simply want to make this as a layer mask and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And you can see that it's now actually built my sweater mask down here on the bottom and this is the only thing that is showing. However I have a problem with this and the problem is, is that the upper edge of both of those shoulders is not going to be based on this original mask that I actually built. So to do that, remember the sweater that we just, the copy that we made right down here that we're calling sweater. I'm going to command click to load that as a selection. And then I'm going to come up to this edge up here at the very top. And what I want to do is on this edge, if I believe this edge is a good edge right here, I'm now working on the mask of my sweater layer. And I can see that there's um, uh, uh, areas in, of transparency down in here that really shouldn't be here. Again, the quick selection, the method that I use is not really as effective as what I had done before. So I'm simply going to hit the B key to get 
get a brush. This, again, the area, remember, the area of our mask that we're working with here, if you hold down the Option key and click on the mask, this is what we're trying to fix, is this area right in here. I'm trying to make this area that's underneath this darker, and then I may actually invert my mask and paint back the other side to actually get that, but we'll see what's going on here. We'll see how this works. Um, I can do this just looking at the mask, or I can do it actually looking at the image. I'm gonna show you guys just the mask part first. So I'm hitting the B key to get a brush, make sure it's a normal brush, 100% opacity, 100% flow. You do not need to worry about the edge of the brush, that doesn't matter because the selection is controlling what we see. And I'm gonna simply start in this edge right here, I'm gonna hit the X key to make white my foreground color, and I'm gonna click and drag across this edge to get just the, this guy uh, actually um, to paint into place. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other shoulder on the other side over here. It's this side over here. I'm clicking and bringing that part back in. And you can see I've got a little bit of a problem right there. However, I can't paint on that because if I paint this guy right here, it's actually going to paint on her neck right here. So I'm gonna fix this guy later using a different method. And then finally, if I worry about the top edge up here, which I am a little bit nervous about right here, is this top edge, invert your mask. So again, or not your mask, your selection. Invert your selection, so come up to the select menu, come down to inverse, and now I can actually paint black coming back on this other direction. So I'm gonna hit the X key to get my, black as my foreground color, and I'm gonna drag across that top again to actually get rid of that. So this is now all based on the original mask that I made of the background. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side over here. Command D to deselect and then save your work. And now when we take a look at the mask, or just look at this whole layer, if you simply click on this guy, you should see a reasonably good example of what's going on. Did this work for everyone? You're yes. Um, I just got lost a little bit. So after you did the white version, did you invert the selection? And then exactly, and did the black version on the other side. Okay. So I'm just painting white on one side, black on the other side. That's all I'm doing. Make sense? Yes. I didn't, oh, why didn't we use the quick selection tool to do that? This actually, it, because the quick selection tool is, all, the select and mask tool is awful when it comes to doing that really fine hair detail. Remember the girl that we did, the girl who was on the beach? It butchered that hair. It butchered it. In this case, this mask is beautiful. And then the mask that you loaded to get that selection, was that the sweater mask? It was no, it was the original background mask. It was a copy of the yes, that we had renamed sweater. It's actually temporary though. It's this guy right down here. This thing has actually done its job. I don't want to keep it around anymore because it's going to confuse me because it's not really the sweater. So I'm throwing the, ma the channel that I made sweater away because again, I've got the sweater mask is sitting right here. It still needs to be refined, so I'm not going to save it quite yet, but it needs to be a little bit more refined. But is everybody pretty good on this? Everybody got just a sweater showing? Katie, it doesn't seem like you've got just a sweater showing. This is looking pretty good right here. So, I'm, I guess, I'm, uh, should I have on the brush? Yes, you should have a brush, but again, the only edges that we're trying to work on right now, we're not trying to work on any of this stuff in here, it's just these shoulders up here. So come over so you're in this area, working in that shoulder area. Good, you're in this shoulder area right over here. So zoom into this a little bit tighter. So again, the selection that you have got, well, I mean, what the mask that you've got was built on the Select and Mask workspace, but we want it to match the selection you made of the background, and that's this edge right here. So with the selection made, Make white your foreground color, and then actually your brush is normal, 100%, 100%, everything's fine. So simply drag across this line once. Like Just drag across it, click and drag. So we click too much in here, so hit Command Z to undo that. Good, and then come into this edge a little bit closer, click there and drag all the way across. Perfect. Now that matches the selection that we made of the blue background. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
And then if you want to do the top side, which you should actually do as well, invert your selection up to the select menu, down to inverse. And then black is your foreground color, and swipe along the top. And do the same thing on the other shoulder, and you're good to go. All right, is this making sense, everyone, so far? Yes. Kind of transparent, so we're going to go in and fix that right now because there's it's not the only place. Okay, so this still needs to be worked on a little bit. Again, if you've got that sweater channel that we had built earlier, you can throw that guy away because we're going to because we're now going to refine this and we're going to make a new one. So I am going to go up to the top. Again, I'm working on my layer mask right here on the sweater mask. I'm actually working on that part. Uh, I'm going to turn on something, though, so that I can see. I'm going to turn on the original new version down at the bottom so I can actually see what's going on here. And I know that there's a problem with just this little edge right here. This is not looking the way this thing is supposed to look. If I take a look at my mask, again, if you want to look just at the mask, hold down the Option key and look at it, you can see that this is not that same nice soft shape that we actually have down here in the new version. So with the new version, at new version actually active, I'm going to hit the P key to get the pen tool, and I'm simply going to outline this part right in here. So again, I'm clicking to draw up, put a little bit of organic nature in there, by not making that a perfectly straight line. Hold down the Option key to get rid of that second point. Come back here to the edge to put a little bit more bend in it. I, this is not a solid straight line, so I'm going to hit Command Z to undo it, and I'm actually going to hit a few more points in here to make this just a slightly more organic part. And then I'm going to come back and complete my selection. And it's the same trick that we've done a thousand times before, guys. This is now my work path right down here. It is this selection right here. If you hover over the icon, hold down the command key and click, it loads it as a selection. We need to slightly soften this because again, the pen tool is too good at this. So up to the layer, I'm sorry, to the select menu, down to modify, down to feather. That half a pixel feather radius is sticky. It's still in there. That's probably just perfect. So I'm going to say OK to that. And then again, I'm going to go back to my layers palette. I'm going to go to my sweater mask. I'm going to hold down the Option key to see it. And this is the thing that I'm actually trying to work with. So you can see, in this case, I want to fill this area with white now. So again, Option Delete fills it with white. I'm sorry, command delete because white is my uh, uh, background color. We'll actually fill that with white, but you can see I've got a mistake right down here on the very bottom edge right here. <clears throat> I need to fix this little bottom edge right down here. That's a bit of a mistake in here to fix that. <clears throat> sorry. Invert your selection. Take a B key for a brush. <clears throat> Make this a very small brush. And again, with black as your foreground color, simply paint that line away. And that actually is going to give us the better edge. And Command D to deselect. And that will actually match up uh, much better. Now, as I start to take a look around this, I'm actually seeing an edge right down here. And I'm wondering if I can't actually make this a little bit better. If you click on the image itself, you can actually see that there's a scalloped edge to this sweater. If I turn everything else off except for the mask that I'm working on, I don't really feel like this is that strong of a scalloped edge. I feel like there's too much transparency in here. So again, I'm working on my sweater mask. So has everybody got this? I need you to have just the blank sweater uh, layer on top, the mask selected, and then we're looking at transparency here. Is everybody here on this? So every layer is off except for the top one that we're working on. And it is active and you've got the mask selected. Are we good on that part? Hit the B key to get a brush. I am going to make it about a 50% hardness. Again, not that it really super matters, but I'm going to leave it in that 50% range. I'm going to change the blending mode of this to overlay, and this is what I'm going to try to do. Don't do this yet. Just watch my screen so that you understand my thinking here, and that hopefully then this will apply and it'll work for you guys as well. If I take a look just at this image right here, you can see that the, my mask is, it's this softness in here. I want to take away some of that um, gray that's actually 
actually in there. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger and I'm going to paint with white on this and watch what happens when I do. I'm going to do it here and then I'm going to undo it and go back and show it to you in real time. But if I click on this guy and drag down across like this, you can see again, because it's that overlay brush, it's protecting the dark area, but it's actually bringing more of that defined sort of scallop detail out. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that and watch it happen in real time. So again, I'm still working on my layer mask with an overlay brush. So I'm painting on the mask, but I can watch what happens in the real deal. And I'm gonna click and drag down here like this, and it's actually giving me this line. Now, some people might say, well, that's a hard line that shouldn't be there. I actually think that should be part of the sweater. Some people would argue that this is a shadow line here that should actually be part of the, of the skin. I don't really believe it should be. If that's the case, and you feel like that, that it should be that way, hit Command Z to undo this. You can actually use opacity with these brushes. So if you take the opacity of your brush down to about 50% and do that same line again, what you'll end up getting is sort of a compromise. You will get a little bit of the sweater that should be shadow part, and you'll get a little bit of the uh, skin uh, as well but it's going to be so deeply in shadow it's not really going to make a whole lot of difference but i think that just gives a little bit more firmness to the edge don't you guys sort of agree see no yes maybe could be no hate it no man i'm watching the game i haven't been doing this work at all no just kidding are we good on this yes yeah it's painting what oh it sure is isn't it because you're painting on the image you need to be on the mask yeah go back in time perfect yeah, and you should be good to go yeah okay so this is actually just your path that you've drawn so go to your path menu palette good hold down the uh, uh, command key and click on that icon that's now a selection Come up to the select menu, down to modify, to feather. We're just softening that edge up a little bit. Say OK. Good. And now you've got that selection part going. Now, most of yours is actually already filled with, um, uh, with white, which is great. But you zoom in really close to that. See that little thing on the very edge? This little thing, ooh, not that far. That little thing on the edge, you don't necessarily want, that guy is actually a part of your selection, but it's not in your image. So take a brush, B key. Good, make sure, change it to normal. Uh, opacity all the way up, 100%. Perfect, and then white is your foreground color, and simply paint in that, you'll see. The selection, whoa, that is completely inverted, so go back, so invert your selection, select menu, inverse, and now paint that, and you're good, and that's it. Don't hit it multiple times. Okay, there's a couple other things that we need to look at really quickly, guys, and then we're done with this thing. Again, hold down the Option key and click on the mask itself. We need to take a look around this mask and make sure that we don't have any other contamination going on here. So when I'm coming down here, I see a little bit right here on the edge of this skin right here. This should actually be black. This shouldn't quite be the color that I'm looking at right here. So again, I've still got an overlay brush. I'm gonna leave my opacity at 50% because this could be fuzz that's actually coming from the sweater. I'm not entirely certain what this is, but at any rate, I'm gonna bring it back a little bit, but I'm not gonna completely eliminate it. I'm gonna hit the X key to get black as my foreground color and simply click and pull away from that and I clean that part up. So, um, Katya, this is when you would actually fix that area of, of the sweater part. So come into that area, just looking at your layer mask. Can you find it? So it's this area in here. So you don't have a selection going, right? Good. So um, overlay brush, white. Go ahead and take yourself back up to 100% on this guy. Good. And then simply paint down that line. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just clean that whole part up. Be careful about it, though. All right, so I've got a little weirdness that's happening down here. I actually think this is skin. I'm pretty sure that this actually is skin. So I'm going to make my brush even a little bit smaller. Black is still my foreground color. I'm going to go ahead and make this a completely soft brush because uh, I don't want to make that edge. You can see how soft this whole area is in here. I don't need to make that any harder in here. So I'm simply going to click in here and pop that part out. 
That part's good. I'm looking along this edge. See how to, a beautiful job that actually did of picking up the fuzziness of that sweater. However, I've got contamination that's sitting right here that I need to get rid of. So a little bit larger brush. I'm going to go ahead and make this a completely hard brush because I'm worried about the overspray of this. You can see that there's areas of the, of the I, I, I need to get both of these. There's some areas here that need to be made darker. There's areas down here that need to be white, made whiter. When you're doing this work with an overlay brush, it's going to be easy easier to make this part over here white and then make the center black. If I go after the center black right now, it's going to make all this contamination that's in the sweater actually go black as well. I don't want that to happen. So again, I'm going to take my opacity all the way back up to 100%, still working with an overlay brush. Hit the X key to get white as my foreground color, and I'm simply going to get rid of that contamination right there, and I'm going to get rid of this contamination right here and this contamination right here, even smaller brush to get rid of that part right there. Then I can go back, hit the X key to go back. Um, with a black brush, I'm going to then soften this brush up. I'm not gonna keep this brush hard because you can see this edge in here is actually pretty soft. So again, I'm gonna take it all the way down to a completely soft brush. Hopefully overlay will protect those areas. Um, and then I'm gonna drop the opacity down. I'm gonna kick myself down so that I can paint this in slowly. I don't wanna hit this all in one stroke. So I'm gonna come after this part and hit it once. I feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna hit it a second time. I'm just, I don't want this thing to be like a perfect edge. I want it to keep some of that sort of organic softness that everything else has had. I'm just holding down the space bar to take a look at the other edges in here. I know that this is actually needs to be cleaned up just a little bit as well. So again, the X key to go back to white, make it a little bit larger brush. And I'm gonna clean up just a little bit of this part up in here. Again, it's still a relatively soft brush. There's contamination running right along this edge right there. I can get rid of all of that. I'm gonna go back to 100% opacity because I've got contamination running all down along this edge right here. Again, I'm staying away from the edge as much as I possibly can. That takes care of that part, but I've also got a problem that's in the skin on the other end of it all. X key gives me black as my foreground color and a couple of taps of that gets rid of that part and it also gets rid of that little contamination right there. I'm going to take a look at the rest of my edge. Everybody else seems pretty good in here. I'm going to double click on the hand and this is now your sweater mask. To go ahead and make this and save this as your sweater mask, command click on the icon to load this as a selection. Come up to the select menu down to save selection and call it sweater. And say OK. Command D to deselect. Then you can actually activate the actual channel part itself and look at your selection. If you zoom in on this again, we've got a spill issue that's running along this top shoulder along here, which we can deal with, but the rest of this selection is pretty flawless. Possibly still a little bit of transparency right down in here. So I'm gonna see if I can get that just a little bit better right here. So back to my sweater selection, it's actually active right now. The B key to get a brush. Again, I know that this part of my sweater right here needs to be white, it needs to be showing, and my, and my mask needs to be showing this part of it. So X key to make white my foreground color. I'm still in overlay blending mode, and I'm gonna hit just this down area, area right down here just a little bit more. Again, I think that this makes the jump and the transition between these two too strong. So Command Z to undo that. I'm gonna drop my opacity back down again, like 50%, and I'm gonna hit this guy a second time. I feel like that's a little bit a better of a compromise. I may even hit the edge of it a third time, a little bit more like that. I feel like that ends up being better. But now I have just refined this again, remember? Four steps ago, I made my sweater mask down in here. I, I loaded this as a selection and I saved it. But now I've gone in and refined it again. So again, my options are to load this as a refined version of my sweater or to simply throw my sweater away. And then again, command click the new sweater to load it as a selection up to the select menu down to save selection and call it sweater. It, you know, again, it's one of those things that you just have to watch and sort of see what's uh, happening in there. And again, that's why history is your best friend. You realize you've gone too far, back it off. Try
try it again. If you realize that you got to, oh, okay, I, I, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be one side 100% or the other side 100%. It's got to be a little somewhere in the middle. Drop the opacity of your, of your brush or drop your, your flow down, either one. Uh, we're cheating things right now. But again, these edges are tricky, but the quality of the edge is still extraordinary. Does that answer kind of what you're asking? Yeah. It's the art of it, for lack of a better way of putting it. Catch you. Yes. So the sweater one that you had going on before, you can get rid of. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, that's the one you wanted to keep. It's the one that actually is the whole body that's marked sweater that you can lose. You don't need that guy. Okay. Yes. Right. I want to delete this. Uh, no, you can leave this layer mask on here. You can leave that part on there. You don't need to worry about that. It's just if you click off the layer, you won't see it here. So you see sweater mask right here. Click on the layer right underneath it. And that's going to go away. You've now got your blue background. Click on the one underneath that. It'll go away. So these only show up when you actually have the layers selected. So let me show you guys what I'm talking to Michael about. So you can see here, I'm going to pull my channel out so you can actually see it in a bigger way. So you can see in here that I've got this thing called sweater mask. I've got my blue background. I've got my blue background refined. And I've got my sweater right here. This sweater mask that's showing up right here is only because I've got this layer active. If I click on my blue background one, this thing up at the top becomes this mask right here. If I click on this down here, they all go away. These are the only ones that I've actually saved as dedicated channels. Now, again, they still exist as masks, but these are the only things that I've specifically dedicated out. Does that make sense? We good on this part? Okay, so I know right now you're, it's like it's like you were juggling three balls in the air and things were going really well and then somebody threw you the fourth ball and it's all of a sudden like fuck. It changes everything, right? This will become it it sinks in. What we're doing here is in its own way simpler than you think it might be. I think you think right now this is so complex, but it ends up being the same process over and over and over and over and over again, and you really do get accustomed to this. Are we good on that part? Okay, so we're almost there, kids. One more save on this guy, so go ahead and up to the save menu. I mean, uh, file, down to save. You'll get another timestamp version of that. Let me put my channel back where it's supposed to be. So then so far here, let's see sort of what we've got going. I'm going to double click on the hand to uh, sort of like kick back out. So I have got, I'm going to turn on my blue background. I've actually uh, got only my blue background and the sweater going. And you can see as we jump in here, come in really close to this edge right up in here. And you can see that again, I've got transparency that's running along this edge up here. But this transparency is explained by exactly this problem that we have right here. I based both of those on one selection. One was the inverse of the other selection. And because this was not, because this, this edge right here had transparency in it, it's not going to come out perfect. It's not going to dovetail perfectly. You get this problem right here, and there is no way to get around that. Now, I can go in and try and mess with this thing. I can work on this a little bit if I want to. But right now, I'm OK with leaving this as it is right now. We'll see what it looks like when we try to go actually do something with these selections. Because again, this is not just about making these random selections and making these perfect masks and then abandoning it all and going to do something else. So we'll see what happens with this problem a little bit later, but I just wanted to point out that it's actually not a mistake, that it's indeed really what is intended. It's the way it is supposed to be. But it also gives me an idea. I can look around. I'm feeling pretty good about this edge right now. I'm feeling all pretty good about these parts in here right now. So the next thing that I actually have to go after is going to be where the hair meets the skin, because if you double click on this, look what we've got. We've got the sweater selected. We've got the background selected. If I can make a selection of just the hair, I've got everything I need. I'm done. Because then all I need to do to make a selection of the skin is subtract the hair, the sweater, and the background, and I've got the skin. So I only need to make one more. That's all I need to make is just one more selection here. And as you guys have already discovered trying to do this in channels, it becomes extremely difficult. If we take a look at our channels really quickly, 
Um, so I'm going to turn on a copy of the new version now at the bottom so that we can see our entire image. But if we start to go through our channels here, let me scooch this up a little bit. Um, as a matter of fact, guys, if we, um, the, our info palette is taking up an enormous amount of room here because I've still got these points on here. These points have done their job. I don't need to keep these points anymore. So to get rid of those so that I've got a little bit more room over here on the other side, come back to your color sampler tool. And then up at the top, it has a clear all button. And if you simply click on clear all, it gets rid of all those points. Again, we don't need them anymore. They've already done their work. It gives me a little bit more room in here. I'm also going to grab on the area just between where channels actually meets history. And I'm going to goose this up a little bit so I can see a little more of my channel action here. You can't really, you can try, you can't really get the, uh, unfortunately the info palette is a pig. Um, it won't get any smaller than this. I don't know why it feels like it needs to keep these in instructions in this big old hunk of space right here for me, um, but I can't, you can't get rid of it, so at any rate, it is what it is. Um, okay, so the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and leave this, uh, I'm going to make another copy of the new version. So again, and I'm going to drag it all the way up to the very top, and once it gets up to the top, I'm going to rename it, and we're going to call this hair, because that's what I'm going to actually try to select in this. Now, again, we can actually look at this. If we take a look at our red channel, and this is the edge that we need to worry about right here. It's not so bad on this other side over here. This has actually got a pretty good uh, uh, difference between the two. But this is the challenge, is this edge that's running right along here. And you can see in the red channel, we're getting no separation. If you go to the green channel, we're getting no separation there. And if you go down to the blue channel, we're getting no separation there either. And the reason this is happening is that if you actually take a look at this, there's very, very, very little color. This is this whole area of her face right here is in shadow. So because this is in shadow, it's dropped the, the saturation of her skin tone. So her skin tone is essentially becoming gray. Her hair already is gray. And these things are really close to one another in tone. So I'm getting no separation for anything. I'm not getting separation by hue. I'm not getting separation by saturation. I'm not getting separation by brightness. I'm not getting any separation at all. They are basically the same. So for me, at this stage of the game, I give in to the Adobe gods and I just say, fucking do the best you can do and I'm going to accept that and I'm going to run with it. So that's what we're going to do. To get this, we're going to actually use Select and Mask uh, uh, Workspace again. So again, with the new hair uh, copy selected, come up to the Select menu, down to Select and Mask Workspace. Uh, I take that back. Do me a favor. Hang on. Hit cancel out of there really quick. You need to turn off everybody that's underneath this. So turn off all the eyeballs that are underneath this guy. It just makes it easier to see what it is we're working on. So the only eyeball that's on is this hair um, uh, uh, layer right here. So again, with it selected, active, and turned on, the only one turned on, up to the select menu, down to select and mask workspace. This thing will actually open up. And again, if you go up to the very top, make sure that you are on the onion skin you will see that you actually have this, so that sort of same 50-50 thing. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up into about the 50%. And again, you'll see if you go all the way to 100%, you see nothing but transparency all the way down, you get the full image. This is just helping give us an indication. It's showing us what is being selected. I am gonna select the very top tool, which is the quick selection tool. I'm gonna to make my brush a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna actually go after the hair. So I'm selecting the hair part. Again, it's butchering this edge along here. I don't really need to worry about this edge right down here, the edge where it's hitting the background right down here. I don't need to worry about that because I've already got that edge is built in my background mask. So I can use that to fix that. I am going to come across the top and you do not want to come down too far again. You don't want to come down too far onto her forehead. You don't want to touch her forehead at all. You want this tool to pick the edge for you. So be very careful as you start to come around this other side, uh, especially on the top part here. And I'm going to kick back into this area as well. And again, I do not care about these edges out here at all. This is not what I'm looking to get. This edge out here, I've already built this edge. I built this edge out here in the blue background. The only thing that I care about is this edge that's actually happening right in here. That's the only thing I care about. 
So it's done a reasonably good job of selecting the easy shit, but it hasn't done a very good job of making a very subtle thing for me. So again, to make this more subtle or hopefully more believable, go to the next tool down, which is the Refine Edge tool. I'm gonna make mine a little bit larger, and I'm going to just paint across part of this and let go and see, and in my case, I think this has done an extraordinarily organically good job of selecting this. Is it perfect? Maybe not. Once I get it on there, am I, kind of, kind of, am I going to come in with an overlay brush and refine a few, few things? I probably am. But I'm certainly going to start with this because this is better than any selection that I could have made or that I could have gotten off of one of those channels. I'm actually going to start to paint down this side again and see what it does for me on this edge down here. Again, pretty organic. I'm staying away from as much of this as I can stay away from. I don't want to hit on any more than I actually have to hit on. You can see that it's actually included. Well, that just got rid of part of the eyebrow. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as part of the eyebrow. I'm going to come up to this little area right here. I'm wondering if I can get just a small pop of this skin right in here. So I'm not going to brush on it. I'm simply going to hit my mouse see what happens. And I feel like in a way that that sort of helped in there just a little bit. I'm going to do a little pop down in there as well. Yeah, that one didn't help me, so Command Z to undo him. I'm going to click on this one as well. I feel like that helped me there just a little bit as well. One more right there. That's pretty good. This edge down here is feeling a little bit better about that. This. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom part of that, and I'm feeling pretty good about this. This whole lower part down here, um, I'm probably just going to have to refine that later. However, we do have a paintbrush that's the next tool down. If you click on the paintbrush for the next tool down, you can actually come down. You can control this paintbrush. You can click on the drop down menu and control its hardness and lightness. I'm going to leave mine at about a 50% hardness. I'm going to make it slightly larger. And then in this area right in here, I'm going to actually paint. And you can see by painting right now, it's bringing that finger back. That's not what I want. Command Z to undo that. Instead, hold down the Option key or click on the minus button right here. And that'll allow you to paint through that part. Actually, that didn't work because it didn't hold down the minus key. It lets you get rid of that part right there. So again, I've got a little bit better of an edge going on in here, and I'm going to live with that part. We need to see what happens along this whole other line down here. So go back to the Refine Edge tool, and we're just going to come down this edge right here. Again, I'm trying to stay out of that hair as much as I can. I'm trying to just hit that very edge. Um, again, you'll see I've picked up a little bit in, of that eyebrow. I can accept that because I can get rid of that part later. I've picked up a whole lot of that eye right there, so I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo that and just continue down here a little bit under it. And I'm feeling like this has actually given me about the best thing I'm actually going to get out of this guy. So this is beginning to feel good to me right now. So again, I'm going to use this. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, make sure I'm outputting this as a layer mask. I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. And you can see that in this case right here, it's actually, I've got a little bit of a problem that's actually happening up here. I'm only looking at this edge on the inside of her face. I'm not looking at anywhere. I'm not looking at this area of, 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 of um, blue down here. I'm not looking at any of that. It's just this edge that's actually happening up in there. Um, I want to do a little work on my layer mask. So I'm going to go ahead and it is the active uh, element of this layer right here. So I am going to go after it with an overlay brush, the B key. I'm going to leave my overlay brush at 50% and I'm also going to make sure it's a really soft brush because this edge work that we're doing right now, it's, it's soft. We're just trying to blend this whole part in. I'm also going to drop my opacity down a little bit lower than uh, um, uh, 50% uh, and make my brush a little bit larger. I'm going to try and clean a little bit of this sort of dark area out of this a little bit. I can't take it all out. It won't be believable anymore, but that's kind of the plan that I'm going to go after. I'm going to get rid of the rest of that eyebrow that's actually happening there. So this is just sort of trying to clean things up a little bit. Again, I'm going to click and draw out, and I realize that I have the wrong foreground color, so Command Z to undo that. Hit the X key to go to black as my foreground color, because again, this part of my mask, this area that's being hidden, is black. So we're painting with black to try to get rid of this. 
and I'm cleaning up a little bit in there. I'm just tapping now, guys. I'm trying to not paint across any of this hair. For this area that is her eyebrow, I'm gonna hit that a couple of times. I'm gonna leave this other rest of this edge up here. If I wanna bring in a little bit more of that hair, if I feel like I lost a little bit too much here, hit the X key to go to white as your foreground color. And again, with an overlay brush, you can start to paint on little edges of this to sort of bring a little bit more of that hair possibly back in. Make your brush really, really small and you can actually get a little bit of a hairline going right there, possibly a little bit more of that part. So that's about as good as this edge is ever gonna get. I'm gonna come back up here to the top, hit the X key again to go to black as my foreground color. And I'm simply gonna click and draw away from this. I'm not eliminating everything that's up there, but I'm trying to push that line back a little bit closer to her hair. And I gotta clean that mistake up that's right there. And I've also got to clean this guy up right here. Now this thing where her eyeballs right in there, that's going to be a really hard one to get. So I'm actually going to go back to a normal brush. I'm going to change my blending, uh, my, uh, uh, the hardness of my brush to a completely hard brush. And I'm simply going to go in and I'm going to clip that guy right there. That only gave me a 30% uh, uh, opacity. Command Z to undo that. Drag my opacity all the way up again. I'm going to zoom in a little bit tighter just so I make sure I can see it and kill that guy right there. So to see what this ultimately looks like, I'm gonna double click on the hand, uh, I'm gonna kick back out. So I feel like, I don't know for sure, but I feel like this is giving me as good an organic edge on the inside of this as I can get. I may have a little hair in here that I may actually go back in and fill in later. I'm not really gonna to try to get that with anything. Um, if you wanted to try to get this again with the Select and Mask workspace, you can go right back in there again. So with again, this actually active, back up to the Select menu, come down, to select and mask. Again, you can see it's not being selected in there. That's where it is. Make sure that you've got the refine edge and just click and drag down here in the refine edge part and then command Z to see if that actually helped or hurt. I think that hurts, uh, you know, and you can't, there's no, again, there's no opacity slatter in this and all of the refined edges, tools, whatever, there's, it's, you're all or nothing. You're either all the way in or you're all the way out. So I'm gonna cancel out of here. I think that that was actually causes me more problems than not. However, what I am having a problem with is the outside of this. So it's the whole outside edge of this. I don't really have the outside edges of the hair here that I want to have, but I said to you already before, we don't need those because we've already made that edge once and I'm simply gonna leverage that. So if we take a look, again, I'm gonna go back down here to the bottom. If we take a look at the blue background refined, you can actually see in here where this is actually white. I can actually paint with that. And then I'm gonna invert that selection and paint out just the opposite. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to load my blue background. So this has now been loaded as a selection. So this area of that's actually being active right here, you can see it's the area that's on the outside that's actually being active. I need the inverse of this because I want to paint the hair. If you can't remember that, hit Command, uh, uh, Command D to deselect really quickly. You can temporarily invert this selection. So if we invert it, Command I to invert it. Now when I load this selection and I paint, it will actually be painting where the hair is. Does that make sense? Because again, the hair is white. So that's what I'm gonna do. Command click to load this as a selection. I'm gonna go back to my hair mask part right here. I'm gonna zoom into this and you need to be careful about this. So, cause it's gonna control this edge really well. But once I get down here past this, it, things are gonna like all go to hell down here. So you just need to be careful how you're painting this guy. So the B key to get a brush, I'm gonna make sure it's a completely hard brush. I'm gonna make sure it has 100% opacity, 100% flow, and it is a normal blending mode. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger, and I'm simply going to come in here, and that is not at all what I wanted to do. Command D to deselect, hit the X key to paint with white. And you can see now I'm beginning to paint back in the hair that was actually, uh, that, I didn't, that I didn't get in that whole select and mask space. You can see I've got hair that's happening down here. I'm gonna bring it down here into this area, down in here. I'm gonna keep coming down in this part down in here. And once I get down to here, I'm gonna stop. Then I need to get rid of background. So to get rid of background, I'm going to invert this mask. So up to select, do the inverse of this. 
So now everything else is selected, hit the X key to actually hide, and I'm gonna paint over that very same area again to get rid of that background. So I'm, I'm just painting across this. You don't need to worry about, uh, um, you just can't hit it more than once. You don't need to worry about how hard or sharp your brush is or any of that stuff because the um, um, selection is actually controlling that part for you. So this is my new version of this. I'm gonna hit uh, Command D to deselect. I've gotta load it again to finish the other side over here, but this is actually, uh, actually what I wanna do. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna deselect because I missed a little part that's sitting right up there. And then finally, again, I've got the selection still going. I've gotta fix this area that's right down in here. So with this down in here, you can actually use that brush to get rid of that background right there. Command D to deselect, and this is now going to be our new selection. So I'm gonna double click on the hand. So this is now the hair that I've actually got. So I've got the hair. I don't have this hair mask selected yet. And I've also, my blue background has been inverted. I wanna re-invert it back the way it's supposed to be. So now I've got the sweater down here. I've got the blue background. I've got two copies of the blue background because one was my refined, my pseudo refined one. Um, I've got the, uh, um, uh, and I've got the hair mask is actually going right here. However, this hair mask has not been saved. I need to save it. So come again over to the hair mask, command click to load that as a selection. Come up to the select menu and come down to um, uh, save selection. And it is going to be her hair. And say okay to that, command D to deselect and we need to go look at that hair selection. And this is it right here. And if we zoom into this hair selection now, we can see that there's a problem that runs right along this edge right here that I need to fix. So I can either fix this on my mask or I can fix it in the hair selection. Because this is in my mask and I feel like here, whatever, I'm gonna throw that hair selection away and I'm gonna simply do it as the layer mask. I'm gonna hold down the control key and click on this guy. You can see the contamination problem that we've got going right in here. Is this sync, everybody able to see this? So to fix it, again, B key to get an overlay brush. Change, I'm gonna, well, I'm, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna make this about a 50% hardness brush. Uh, black is my foreground color. Change my blend mode to overlay. And I'm gonna clean up this edge that's right along in here. Again, I'm staying away from where that really meets the other side. I'm not making this overlay brush tool work any harder than it does. It's actually doing a pretty good job. It's up in there. Again, I might pop just a little bit more of that part in there. And then I'm gonna come around on the other side, hit the X key to clean up just a little bit of this hair that's up on the top and take a look around the rest of this. The rest of this is feeling pretty okay. This is her eyebrow again that's right here. I didn't hit this hard enough, so I'm gonna hit it right now. So again, X key to get to black is my foreground color, and I'm just tapping along here. That's to get rid of that eyebrow. There's also a little part of her fingernail right down there. I'm gonna get rid of that part, and I'm gonna call it a day. So again, I've refined this mask right now, but I threw away the first one that I saved. So I'm simply going to command click to load this as a selection again, up to the select menu down to save selection and call it hair. Command D to deselect. Now, if I have done this well, I should have everything I need to make the final mask here. So again, I'm going to take a look at what I'm all seeing. So this is what I'm actually seeing, and you can see again, I've got problems right here. This is still that dovetailing problem that's actually existing right up in here. It simply is what it is, guys. There's really nothing else that we can do about that. Um, it, it just is what it, it's the math that Adobe uses, and there's no, uh, there's no way to get around that part. Um, so I'm accepting all of that, but now what I need to do is I need to make the skin. I've got everything that I need because now I can actually just subtract everything I need to build the skin. So to do the skin, come over to your um, channels palette, click on simply uh, add a blank new channel and it's gonna add this thing that's called alpha one and it's a completely black channel, which is fine. So with this completely black channel selected, I'm gonna double click on it and call it skin. 
and say okay. Then I'm going to come up to the hair channel. I'm not going to pick it. I'm not going to do this, which actually selects it. I'm simply going to hover over this. I'm going to hold down the command key and hover over it and click on it to load this as a selection. I'm still working on my skin layer right here. And so I'm actually going to fill this with white. White is my background color. So it's command delete, command D to deselect. I'm going to do the same thing for the sweater. I'm going to command click to load the sweater. I'm still doing this on my skin layer because white is my background color. Command delete fills that guy as well. And then finally, uh, command D to deselect. Finally, I'm going to go up and do my background. My blue background is sitting right here. Command click to load the blue background. I'm still working on my skin layer right down here. And again, it's option, I mean, sorry, command delete to fill that with white. Command D to deselect. You'll notice that there's a line that runs right along the top of her hair right here. I'm actually going to get rid of that part. And there's also this whole part around her hair that I can actually get rid of. Those are all those transparent transition dovetail problems. So I'm gonna move into this really quickly. I'm gonna hit the B key to get a brush. I'm gonna make sure it's a normal brush. Uh, completely hard brush, because you can come in right next to those edges. You don't need to worry about that. Totally hard brush, 100% opacity, 100% flow. I'm going to click on this line and realize Command Z to undo that, that white was not my foreground color. It is now. I'm going to get rid of that part right there. I'm actually going to, in this case right here, again, I'm going to go to an overlay brush at this because I don't want to screw this part up in here. So um, uh, I change my blending mode of my brush to overlay. White is still my foreground color, so I can kill all of that and not lose all of that part. So I'm gonna get rid of the rest of all of this. I'm gonna come back and get this with another brush harder later on. That part, that whole edge is correct. This whole edge down here can actually be changed because again, that's not part of my skin at all. This part right here, I can also get rid of. And then finally back to just a normal brush to get rid of the stuff on the very top. And it's this. And I've also got a small little bit of hair that's right here in the middle that's causing me a problem. It's this little guy right in here. This has not actually ever been cleaned out and I need to clean this part out right now. So to do that, I'm gonna scroll up to the top I'm going to turn on a copy of the new version so I can see everything. I'm going to select on this and I'm simply going to select this entire area in here with the pen tool. So I'm going to move in on this, the P key, and simply do the skin of the fingers. So I've selected this little area in here. Now that took me long enough that I'm actually gonna save that path. I don't wanna to have to do that one again. So up to the path menu, and I'm gonna simply double click on the work path and I'm gonna call it uh, in between fingers or something. I'm gonna say okay to that. I'm gonna load this as a selection, command click. I'm going to feather this selection up to the select menu, down to modify, down to feather. Half a pixel radius is fine on that. And then I'm going to go back to my skin, and it's this little part that's right in here. This all needs to be white. It should, it's not part of my mask right here. So again, white is my foreground color. Option delete, command D to deselect. And this is now my skin, although it's inverted. So to make this correct, command I. So where did I lose you guys? I'm gonna save this really quickly. So just realize, did everybody get through making the hair? We all got through making the hair, right? 
So then to get the skin, we only have four areas of this image. We have the background, the sweater, the hair, and then the skin. That's the fourth one. If you make a blank channel that's filled with black and you load the other three selections and fill them with white, what is left over is your skin. Make sense? Okay, so then let's do something with this. We've got 10 minutes and then we're gonna take a break, but let's figure out why you went to all of this trouble to do all of this work. So I'm gonna come back up here. To, I'm gonna click on this guy. I'm actually gonna see how well my skin one actually worked. So I'm gonna make yet another way up to the top. I'm going to rename it skin and say okay. Skin mask. Select and then see how good things look. I'm going to turn off the new version and you can transition or what have actually uh, again these have been problematic but speaking about as good as this again we can go in and refine certain things but the whole goal of this is to never really change the uh, not to actually do knockouts and separate this apart here's the goal of all of this so if you've gotten this far just save your work for a second i'll let you finish this you're actually the you're going to turn this in on Friday. So if there's any work you still want to do on this guy, go ahead and do this. But I'm telling you, you guys, you're pretty far along here along the way. Are we good on that? Now I want to show you what we can really do with it. So just save your work at this stage of the game. Come back down in here. And actually, you can turn all these. Or even the very, very, yeah, let's just leave on the new version, version of Sunny. actually on. I'm going to turn all of this stuff on. I am going to do these very top. Select your top layer because we're just going to. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to load the sweater as a selection. So if you come over here and look in your channels palette, you can find the one that says sweater. Hold down the command key and click on it. It loads it as a selection. Come back over to your layers palette. Click on the very bottom. We're going to add an adjustment layer. And in this case, we're going to add hue and saturation. And when you do, because you had an active selection going, you can see it's actually added a layer mask that's got that actually down at the bottom. And then simply grab your hue slider and make this any color sweater you want to make this. Are you kidding me? Does that work for you guys? Crazy, right? If you feel like this sweater is a little too saturated, simply drop the saturation down and we can actually make them pastel -y. Yet you haven't impacted the color of the background at all. You haven't impacted the color of the girl's skin at all. We're gonna add another one of these. Come back down again over to your channels palette. I want you to load the blue background. Come in. Oh, you're right. This little part in here, good eyes. And I hit everybody for that one in the grading. Okay, so we need to fix that. I'm going to throw away this hue saturation layer first. I'm going to go after the pen tool, the P key. I'm going to click on this little spot down in here. I'm going to click and drag to actually give me that form right there. Come back and finish this. Don't cheat this little weird whatever happens area down in here. Oh, that's not. Everybody look at this. If you zoom in really quick, now I don't know why I find things like this gross, but that's her thumbnail. It's the underside of her thumbnail. So make sure that you don't include the thumbnail. So again, I'm going back in history to undo that second anchor point so that I get this right on her thumbnail. And then I'm gonna come around. I think I can get this in one shot, yeah. Uh, and again, I'm going to save this because this guy is a troublemaker. It always has been. So again, over to the path menu, double click on it, and I'm going to call it uh, sweater at shoulder. I'm going to command click to load that as a selection. 
up to the select menu, down to modify, down to feather. Half a pixel radius will be fine. And then I'm gonna go find my sweater channel. It's sitting right here. This needs to show my sweater, which means it needs to be filled with white on my sweater layer. White is my foreground color, option delete, command D to deselect. Now when I load this selection as a, uh, my sweater channel as a selection, command click to load it. Come back up to the top to show everything in here. Now I can go back to my layers palette and I can add a hue saturation layer to this guy. And it does, and now again, I'm gonna zoom, well, you'll see when I start to change the hue, the hue of this guy, whatever, it changes the hue of everything. So we're actually good to go in this regard. Um, so again, I'm gonna change the sweater. I'm gonna make it, let's see, I'm gonna make it sort of a pinky thing. Say what? So I'll show you. Let me go back in history. This is when I just closed the path right here. So you've made the path, right? Yeah. Okay, so go to your path palette and it's sitting right here. It's still called work path and you need to name it. You need to save it as something. So I'm gonna call it sweater at shoulder and say okay to that. Then command click to load this as a selection. Again, the pen tool is too precise, so we need to soften that edge just a little bit. Up to the select menu, down to modify, down to feather. A half a pixel feather will be fine on this, so it's actually worked. Um, and then go back down to your sweater uh, channel right here, the one that's called sweater. Select it, and you'll see this area, if it's sweater, we need it to show, so that area needs to be white on this mask. So again, white is my foreground color. Option delete fills that with white. Command D to deselect and you're done. Did that work? Yes. Okay, so then again, I'm gonna load this as a selection. Scroll up to the top, click on this, go to my layers palette, add a new hue saturation layer onto the top. It actually puts that mask on it in place. Again, I'm gonna double click on my hand to zoom back out. So now I can actually change this to any color of the rainbow. I can change it to blues. I can change it to more saturated blues. I can change it to less saturated blues. So we can do a pale blue, which looks way too much like the background, so I don't like that. So I'm gonna actually kick it back over here. Oh, let's do dusty rose. Don't you wish somebody would give you a job naming colors and pay you like a, what do you do for a living? I work at Revlon and I name colors of fingernail polish. Really, how much do you make doing that? $375,000 a year? You're kidding me. Where do you live? Anywhere I want. Any questions? Shoot. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, and let's try one more really quick, as long as we're at it. Uh, come back over to your channel. Find your blue uh, background layer. Command click to load that as a selection. And then again, we're going to do the same trick. We're going to add an adjustment layer to this. I'm going to come up and actually add a hue saturation adjustment to this guy. And I'm going to change the hue of my background because I kind of think I want more of a green thing going on here. And look at this, guys. Are you kidding me? We haven't even removed the spill in this, which we could do. But does this make sense what's going on here? Yes. I missed the step where you converted the hair tab into, from the alpha mask. So I think, did you rename? So I called the alpha one skin because that was the final thing that we had to do right mm -hmm. I subtracted everything from it that we had because I'd made the hair I'd made the background and made the sweater and what was left is the skin but it's black you need to invert that mask because it needs to show the skin so the area of the skin needs to be white everything else needs to be black okay. did that work yeah okay and then did you replace that mask with where the no, I just made another virgin copy called it skin and put that mask on it. Okay. okay. So then the final thing that we can actually do here, guys, is you can actually see, so clearly we can do all sorts of things in terms of controlling all of this part. Again, I haven't removed the spill part of this, which I would probably do when I finalized whatever that background color would be. I would go in and do a spill removal on this part. Simple to do. We did this before. Is everybody good about that? Should we go through that? Okay, let's go through that part right here. So let's say that this is the ultimate place that I wanna end with all of this, but what I've got going on here, you can actually see, 
Um, uh, I, I've actually, if the, these are the only things that I'm actually doing here, I've got all of this separation is happening down here on all these individual layers, and that's not really helping me. All I really want to do is isolate this girl from the background. So to do that, I'm going to put up yet another new virgin copy of Sunny that sits here. I'm going to do another copy of this. So I'm going to make another new copy. I'm going to drag this all the way up to the very top. Because in this case, I'm not trying to separate any of those things. Keep going all the way up to the top. Uh, I am all the way, yeah, I, I want to be underneath those hue saturation. No, no, I'll stay above this part. So I'm going to go up to the very, very, very top. So I'm now going to load my background because that's really the only thing that intersects where this hair is actually meeting this part. So I just need to remove the background, I guess is what I'm saying here. So to do that again, uh, command click on your um, uh You do that, it puts masking out um, the back. Well, in this case, it's masking everything but the. I'm going to invert this mask and I, and you can see that it's. Change. Move, so you need to be very careful. The image part of the layer itself, and I'm going to remove blue. So to do that, hit the B key to get a brush. You need to change the blending mode of your brush now from normal down to color, because what color does is it will replace the color, but it will respect the luminosity. And to see what I mean by that, if you click on the color picker down here at the bottom, the foreground color picker, and you actually pick on a color of her hair, you'll see it's a pretty dark gray. Go ahead and say OK to that. Now, painting on the image layer right here, if you paint across this, you see it changes the color of her skin, but it respects the luminosity, which is why you still see all the detail. You still see the texture of her skin, the eyebrow. You still see her eye. If you keep going on here, you still see all of that. That's what the blending mode of this brush is actually doing. So I'm going to go back back in time to undo this because I don't want to use the brush on her skin. I simply want to use it where I've got spill. Soft brush. And then again, what you need to know is this. I need everybody to look at my screen really quick. You do not want to start from the hair inside here. when you change everything to one color, it doesn't really look completely real, but I'm doing very subtle work out here on the edge, and I'm going to resample my color and number. Halfway down here, and then I come in on her hair. I'm holding down the option key to temporarily get the color picker, and I resample, and I will just to I'm actually doing. I'm coming down here. I'm going to resample. Is basically once I get down here near her fingers. If I try to paint over that little spill that's right there on the edge of her finger, if I click like it, actually you'll see it sprays a little bit. In. So now I need to go to a hard edged brush and finish doing this area that's running right along her feet. Make it a to get the area that's sitting right in here. Although what I could also do for the little area that's, yeah, no, I'll just go ahead and do this. So. Isn't it easier just to do it? You could click mask. If people are doing that, again, the thing that you carries in the opacity part as well. So I wouldn't want to build a, I wouldn't want to load this as a selection and then try to paint that out because the spill is actually transparent. And so I'm not fully selecting that edge. 
So if you want to see what we have done, because I've talked about this being destructive before, simply come in here, hold down the shift key and click on your mask and you can see what we've done. We've actually changed the background to that gray color of her hair. So we're still getting spill. It's still showing through, but it's the, so the mask is what's controlling what I see, but this is now letting that come through and what's coming through is the color of her hair. So it appears like the spill is actually removed. But what I will say that, and because this brings up an interesting point, if you actually turn on, so I'm going to click on this to turn that off. I'm going to turn on um, uh, both of my layer guys down here. Sorry, not this guy here, but one of the new virgins. So in this case, what I've done is I've actually removed in this area right here, if we take a look at it, what I've actually done is I've made the color of her hair, the spill removal I did is actually the color of her hair. If this was true spill, it would be this new green color. So to introduce that, you can continue to do this work. You would actually come over to the new green color. Again, I've still got the B key as a brush. I'm still gonna be working on this layer that's up here. I'm gonna sample this color. So again, I've got this guy sitting right here. Hold down the option key and sample my new color. Uh, and the reason it actually sampled um, uh, a gray, a dark gray right here is because I've got my mask actually selected. You wanna make sure that you've got the image selected and then hold down the option key and click. And you can see it samples your green. So I'm actually going to paint this green in as the spill color of her hair. Does that make sense? So to do that, it's the same trick. I'm gonna make my brush larger. Again, I'm, you can paint right over the layer that we've already painted on. We, we made it gray. I'm just gonna paint on it now and make it green. So again, color is still my blending mode. I'm gonna see what happens using 100% opacity. If it makes it too weird, I'm actually will probably back this off and only do 50%. So I'm painting with this green color to actually add that green spill. And you can see it's too strong. It's colorizing that too strongly. So Command Z to undo that. Drop your opacity down. I'm gonna drop it down to about a 30%. And again, make sure that you've got a completely soft brush. I had a completely hard one. I need to go to a completely soft brush. And then again, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger here. And I'm gonna to start to pull back in some of that green. And you can see now I'm actually getting rid of that sort of bluish tint that was left in that gray of her hair. And I'm actually reintroducing the spill that would actually be there. Is that making sense to you guys? Because again, that green would be spilling through. So now if you hold down the uh, shift key and click on the mask, you can see I've added green in that background area. And again, if it's too strong and too obvious, you go back in and you hit it a second time. You can paint over and over and over and over and over on this. Are we good on this part, guys? Okay, save your work. Um, I've got 20 till. If we could, no, actually I got 235. If you guys can be back at 250, that would be great. Um, we've got a lot of other things to get to today. Is everybody good on this? Are there questions about this? I know it's a lot. Stay with it. It'll make sense. I promise.